My mom used to call um, our local thrift shop the second house, but she would say it in Spanish. She was like, Ese con And I'm like, oh, I thought second house was the name of the place. Like for a really long time, I was like, oh, my mom's going to the second house store. Okay, all right. <laughs> <gasps> She's gonna kill me. For oh, this no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm mom. So dead. <laughs> Welcome to the Gratitude and Style Podcast. My name is Madeline Jones. And I'm Megan O'Connor. And on this podcast, we talk about fashion, style, and living a life of gratitude. With over 25 years of combined industry experience, I think it's safe to say we know a thing or two. And what we found at the end of the day is that gratitude is always in style. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Gratitude in Style. Today's episode is brought to you by Liam Bryant. So today, I want to read a quick quote before actually we start. Latina-owned businesses are the fastest growing segment of women-owned enterprises in the United States. The source is the National Women's Business Council. I am super excited to introduce my very, very good <laughs> friends and owners of the Blogger House. Sandra and Darlene. Hi. Welcome. Welcome. We're, we're so happy to be here. Thank you so much. So our segment is about entrepreneurship today. And I love the fact that your the Blogger House has, has a community and it's also serving a purpose. But I wanted to start way in the beginning because you both started off with Blogger House while you were still working nine to five. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that decision. How did you start? Why did you even start Blogger House? Tell me about how that. How did you get here? How, how did you get to this God. point? How long is this <laughs> How did we get to this point? So we have a running joke in the house. Well, I'll say, Sandra, I have an idea. And she will roll her eyes. I'll literally. Make it roll like. <laughs> Because that's how it literally started. I one day had just a closet full of clothes. You guys know how it is. We do a lot of campaigns and things like that. I was already actively influ doing influencing work and like my closets were busting at the seams. We live in New York, guys. Like we don't have large closets. No. Um, so one day I, I said, I have an idea. And she was like, oh, whatever, you and your crazy <laughs> ideas. And I said, I'm gonna go on Facebook Live and try to sell my, some of my clothes. And if it sells, great. And mm -hmm. if it doesn't, then Fine, I didn't lose anything about it. I sold everything I had in my rack, and then I had to pull stuff from a bin that mm -hmm. I had, like a maybe bin that I had, and I sold all of that. Finished, ran downstairs. Sandra and I live in the same house, yeah. um, and that's why we call it the Blogger House. So ran downstairs and said, oh my goodness, you don't even know. I just sold everything. Was that like Facebook post or you did a live? No, a live. An actual live? Yeah. You just added the blue. Lights. Like, out of the blue, no lights, no numbers. It was like, it was like selling this red top from Ella Who wants the red top? Yeah. Yeah. Like, or, you know, selling who wants the polka dotted, you know, shorts with the ruffle trim. Not the polka dot shorts with the red trim, the <laughs> white trim. Okay. And what did and you do? Like write it down? Yeah, write it down. Like yeah. hand wow. <laughs> Just like on a piece of paper, <laughs> not even like it was like there was crazy. no structure, there was no order, there nothing. was nothing. It was just like total spontaneous. That's very much in my nature. If I want to do something, I will just like jump on it. And so then I ran it down and I said, Oh my god, you you know, I just did this, I just sold everything. And she said, All right, I'm one of, I want I want in on the I'm next in. one. I'm, I'm like, I yeah. want it. This sounds great. A great way to get rid of my clothes and make a little cash at the same and time. And I will tell you that for the first year we functioned like super bare bones, like no lights, no numbers, writing everything down, but not even using a, com a no. computer. Like I don't even like know we didn't why. I know what computers were. <laughs> we were writing everything down in a notepad. <laughs> so <laughs> archaic. Like we had no computers in the world. I know. <laughs> it was like so crazy. And then we would only really do it when we needed to kind of like purge clothes and then it started to grow and um, more people started shopping and our little community started growing and people would contact us, hey, when are you having another sale? When is there another one coming? And for uh, you know a while, they started creating like a little bit of a buzz and we were like the blogger house girls. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, when we evolved to the next stage and it's, you know, we ordered some lights. <laughs> We use a computer, Lights, use the computer, computer oh, numbers. We yeah. ordered some numbers. Paper numbers. We're not fancy. We have plastic numbers. Oh, I know. We had paper numbers at first. And yeah, it was, you know, that's how Blogger House started. Well, there's just not, an idea. There's not a little bit of buzz now. Now it's I a big buzz. I think it's safe to say buzz. that there's a big buzz. Yeah. And it's a really incredibly established women-owned, Latina-owned business. And we're just so proud of you guys because we know you personally. You. 
but it really is amazing and it's incredible to see that it could it literally came from an idea like yeah. out of nowhere oh, yeah. and just literally was like nowhere. boop gotta get rid of some stuff yeah. but did you anticipate it being like did you think that you were going to sell out immediately oh absolutely not no i i was but what I went, was happening on the line like what was the feedback were you just going off of the feedback no, the girl the people loved it one because it was um making clothing that uh, the plus size world clothing is not always accessible mm -hmm. because if you want some of the nicer brands you have to invest a little bit of money but not everyone has that mm -hmm. so we found that on our lives we had women who were students we had women mm. who were teachers Retired women, mm. older women yeah. who are very yeah. limited in income. We had one customer at one point who um, she would let us know she would pay all of her invoices on this day. That's when she got her whatever subsidy money that she would mm. get, and that's what she would do with it. And we okay, no, we'll probably you know we had our own like little little layaway plan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wow. we got you when yeah. you get your check. We we know you're good for mm -hmm. it. Um, and we made clothing accessible to everyone and mm -hmm. nice clothing great clothing beautiful brands name brand stuff like just like what we're wearing that maybe someone who's on a very very tight income right could not normally shop they were now getting access to it's us. amazing right at what point did you realize that this was an actual business did that point when did it that happen? right away. We filed our taxes. <laughs> we filed our taxes. Yes. Because and our accountant yelled at us. They were like, yeah. issue here. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it definitely wasn't right away because remember, we sold our own clothes for two years. Right. Yes. Before we started right. doing consignors because of someone special sitting next to us. My necessity. I know. So, so it's true. I was you like, know, so. Yeah. No, seriously. I literally went to them mm -hmm. and I was like, um, can you sell my clothes? And we were like, yes. that's how they started. I was their first customer. Yeah, she was our first. Well, other people had asked, but you know, when Maddie comes to you and says, <laughs> You need to sell my clothes, you make it work. You sell her clothes. Yeah, you that's say what like you that. do. I was like, you like, don't say no. You don't say no to Maddie. I mean, at that point, I'm like, um, I went to was like, We need to figure this out. Yeah. Maddie's asking us to sell her clothes. Get out the binder. Yeah. Like, and we were like, Okay, what? Oh, the notebook, because you know, we don't have computers. <laughs> <laughs> the funniest thing is, it's like, Dude. What do we what do we charge, Maddie? Like what? Well, yeah, do that it? was. It was like, oh my god. What, and then we like, know? it's like when you are, you know, when you're an influencer and you're coming up with like a rate. A rate. Exactly. It was like that. And I was like, all right, we're gonna tell her this number and we'll see if she'll take it. And when she says, yeah, well, I don't care. I'm just. That's I want fine. She said, yeah. yeah. So cool. I was like, yeah. Right. Well, from my perspective, it's like. You're, no brainer. It's a, it's a service, it's a service you have to pay for. It. Absolutely. Wish more people thought of it that way. So let me let me ask you to do something though for. People who may be listening or watching mm -hmm. who don't know what Blogger House Curvy Closet is, can you summarize it and explain exactly what you do and how you do it? Awesome. So Blogger House is an online consignment store for, for the plus size community. We specialize in selling new and gently used clothing, um, predominantly of um, plus size influencers, models, or uh, people in the plus size community, but also regular women. We sell clothing... Um, we call our community the Blogger House Squad, the BHCC Squad, and sometimes we have squad members that have sales as well mm -hmm. because they have quite a few now. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We have their their lifestyle changes. Maybe they mm -hmm. lose weight. Maybe they gain weight. Maybe they just want to purge their old style, mm -hmm. start a new style. So they'll sell with us, um, and it's all done through Facebook Live twice a week for the most part. And it's just a whole lot of fun. I mean, we we sell clothes, but we chat. We it's, laugh. A <laughs> it's, it's a party. It's a party. It's also a novella. It's a party. Yeah, this it's is a novella party. happening right here. Yeah. <laughs> I say it all the time. We're like, we're at your, like the you know the housewives of the Bronx meets like HSN. Yeah. Yes. And when we first started, we're like, oh, if we ever got picked up by HSN, I'm like, no, HSN does not want us. Like, <laughs> we are way too crazy. We're now. not too. We're not polished enough for HSN. <laughs> it was it's like, too you'll have funny. my dog barking. You'll have the baby yeah. crying at one point. You'll have a monsoon swip through, which has actually happened. Yes. Um, at some point. So. But none of which bothers your anyone. Community. No, they because love it's real. It. Like exactly, they, they love it. it. They, yeah. You know, we are just. We say this all the time. We want to be the girls that you take into the clothing store. Right. As plus size women, we we few of us have had that opportunity, mm -hmm. right? Of going shopping with your girlfriends, right. going into the clothing store, being able to grab a bunch of things, having your a girl that looks like you say, "Hey, you look cute in that." That doesn't happen that often for yeah. us. So we are that for each other. Yeah. So yeah. we're gonna encourage you. We're gonna push yes. you. Yes. We're we're gonna try to get you outside of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. 
And we have girls who say, I've never worn a crop top, but in Blogger House, yes. I, thanks to Blogger House, not why I will. Or I've never worn faux leather leggings, like, mm-hmm. to which to us, it's like, wait, what? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, who doesn't wear faux leather? I'm like, that's my false staple. Nah, yeah. <laughs> um, but through Blogger House, they can because it's affordable, so they can try it without feeling like, oh my God, I just spent $80 on a pair of mm-hmm. leggings. And you have a group of cheerleaders cheering you on, not only us, their fellow community, they the have squad their, their friends, mm-hmm. which I think feels more important than obviously. I don't want to discount the fact that you're doing a great thing in sustainable fashion and mm-hmm. selling gently used or new clothing and keeping it affordable. But ultimately, like to me, my favorite part of everything is that once you are part of the Blogger House Kirby Closet group, there's a group you join the Facebook group, you're in the squad, you're in it. Yes, you're in it. <laughs> once you're in it. You get to be witness and be part of this whole community that you've created where like everyone really literally cheers people on. So what's beautiful is like somebody will post a picture in like a dress they bought from Maddie's sale and then everybody floods the comments. It's like, you look stunning. This is so beautiful. Have you had a great day? Congrats on your interview. Whatever it is because everyone knows everything Mm -hmm. about the moments in their lives Mm -hmm. that they're shopping on BHTC for, which is really incredible when you think like that to me is more important than anything that you've created this beautiful community of women just literally like high-fiving each other on the internet and supporting each other absolutely i mean we know like you know who had babies who had losses Mm -hmm. who has gotten sick and we you know we pray over people we Yep. Um, encourage people it's um, our consigners when they're going through things we say hey guys keep this person in thought and prayer mm-hmm. um, you know I think it's just so important I, I, online communication and social media and sometimes you see all of this crazy negative especially amongst women and for us we just wanted to create a space that felt safe yeah. like yes. our girls can go on there one of the first things we say if it's not your aesthetic if it's not your style I don't want to hear it I don't want to say right. oh, who, who would wear that we've blocked people from mm-hmm. making comments like that because that doesn't fly right. somebody likes it that's so, right of yeah. course. that's right absolutely like it, it's a-okay but somebody likes it not all of our consigners are are our aesthetic mm-hmm. but are some of our audience members like it so yeah. then so yes. be it like me I'm a consigner then I just go and I shop again and, uh, take yeah, my <laughs> that's how it happens <laughs> but you both had nine to five jobs and I know that there's a lot of people that are kind of in that space where they start a a company, but then they're like, when am I ready to leave that nine to five job? What did that look like for each one of you? Um, So for me, it kind of, again, it was a turn of events. Um, I became ill and I decided to choose my health over my career at the time. And taking that time apart away from my nine to five job allowed me to see that I had to bet on myself. And we talk about this all the time. It's very hard growing up, I feel like, in Latino communities where you're set up with these really high expectations and you don't have a network of other entrepreneurs that you can see and learn from. So we were like the first of it, right? We were mm-hmm. the first ones in our families to try to do something like this. Wait, you're leaving your nine to five um, career? Your mm-hmm. nine to five job before that? Still right. doesn't understand. Yeah. He's checked and he's like, are you okay? Are you, know, are you, are you, you know, paying your bills? And I'm like, dad, we're, I'm good. Like, they just don't understand. Like, yeah. no one in my family has ever done something yeah. like this. Right. So it's like, it's foreign to them. So. so the idea of betting on yourself is really hard. And um, I said, you know, I, I had some money saved. Um, I had the conversation with my husband. I was the first one to go full time with this. And I said, look, I have money saved. I can pay all my bills for one year. So I was like, let me get one year. If in that one year I run out of money or I need you to cover me for expenses, then I'll go find another nine, for, nine to five. And he said, okay. And then he had major, like he was a financial advisor at the time. So he had super yes. anxiety about the whole yes. thing. <laughs> He's like a number of guys. He's like, like, I guess it's going to be oh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is not what yeah. <laughs> um, And yeah, and it, it worked. It started growing. And then like halfway through it, I was like, all right, dude. You, you come in like you're doing this oh god the um, pressure was on and i'm like <laughs> i'm so my dad and that like i've been working since i was like 15 and like i've always had a job and it's just like what are you doing i'm like the sense of security would not let me go and it just happened to have that you know my job was downsizing and i'm like you know what this is god's this is way of saying that you need to do this Absolutely. like i have you covered 
Go for it. This is your path. Like, yeah. And this Sorry is about the job. And this is your path. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, but I wasn't happy there anyway. It was just that is the ultimate blessing in disguise. It was. Like, the actress yeah. you probably maybe never would have left. No. Absolutely on not. On your own. Absolutely. Never. She would have never left. Without that push. And we had conversations about this and it was like, if you can't leave your full-time job, we have to discuss so, the future of yeah. this because yeah. I can't do this full-time. And then, like, we would wait for Sandra to come home from work. Like, invoicing day, girl. We, we were up to, like, like, 2 in the morning. Yeah, insane. Because so we had to wait crazy. to get home, to invoice. I was, and thankfully, then I didn't have any kids, so it was different. Mm-hmm. But I was like, I don't know what's going to happen to us if we can't, if you yeah. don't decide to go full time wow. with us. But the force is set otherwise. That's the it. did it for her. <laughs> That's it. it. So I have I'm my own entrepreneur and I have a business partner for f- like 15 years and some people don't even realize that Valerie is like a real person she's like because she's not, she's a human, she's, a human she's, and she's actually like real. In 15 years, we've never had an argument. We have seen things completely different, but we discuss them and we respect each other's opinions. Sometimes it takes her a really long time to convince me to do things because I'm very like rigid when it comes to change and stuff like that. I'm like, Ooh. I was like, if it ain't broke. Don't fix it. Like, don't do it. Um, But I develop a friendship. And then I have this friendship with Megan. And here we are, gratitude and style. And I would love to know, you guys were friends first. And then you went into business. And you live in the same house. house. Please tell us how this works. Let's just start with her mom, first of all. When she was like... Kind of against me moving in because she's like, you guys are such good friends. Like, is that a, you know, a good idea? I got so many warnings about this. It's like, are you crazy? You're moving in with your friend? Like, yeah. this is bad. This is not good. But we moved in first and then started the business. Yes. So it, it that came first. So that was the first warning. It's like, you're crazy to move in. I've seen this be, turn out horrible. And it was, that was also like, a lot of our relationship had, our development over the last few years has happened because of need. I needed to get someone to live downstairs otherwise i wasn't gonna be able to afford my house mm-hmm. and she needed a place to move and it worked out together so wow. it's like we it was like we were supposed to be there like so many Fate. things have brought us Fate. together That's without true. us even realizing mm-hmm. it until later on when we like tell our stories and of I'm course like, wow like we were like supposed to and it was a fast friendship like i felt like i knew darlene forever like i met her the first day it was like my home girl for like 20 years so it was not difficult to become it's probably friends. because I casually stalked her for so long a time <laughs> that I knew everything about her. So I was just like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're your a big dog. deal. <laughs> oh, I yeah, can. your mom. Yeah, I know all about them. <laughs> Not creepy at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> but how do you preserve your friendship, business? Because I feel like that was the biggest question. Like, a lot of people are like, how you do know, they preserve the stress are, of the two? Yeah. And the funny thing is that we're, so we're both Scorpios. We are Same. Like two three weeks, of us. You're all numbered at this table. <laughs> we're like two weeks apart, but we couldn't be like the furthest apart in personalities. We're night and day. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely like YOLO, you know, spontaneous. <laughs> yeah. Let's do this. She is like, I mean, let's break down the plan. And I'm yes. like, you're so mean. Oh God, I'm dying. I'm like, <laughs> and, and then that goes back to like, I have an idea. And I'm yes, like, this is here we go again. Yeah. This is like every week. Like I'm like, I have a new idea. Did you think of it? But anyway, the fact is that the fact that makes us different makes it work. Mm. Of course. Um, because we are able to fill in where the other one is mm-hmm. weak. That's first. But also like very early on, we decided that like we've always been, if there's an issue, Let's leave it at the table. Like, mm-hmm. if we argue about something friendship wise, we can't bring it into the business. Like, we right. have to leave that there right. and then move to the business. And right. then if we argue something business wise, we can't bring it into the house. Like, you know, and sometimes we need our time apart. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. We can oh, sense yes. it when we're like, it's starting to get like too much. Yes. And like, she'll go do her own thing, I'll go do my own thing. Um, but then we'll come back together and like, we literally come back together like nothing ever happened. Like, no we can have like a whole like, that makes all that. <laughs> and then like, oh, I love it. I love it. All the time. Come like, back the next the day and we're like, oh my God, that customer's so crazy. I swear, like nothing <laughs> Like nothing happened. happened. But I think a lot of people that, you have to understand that um, what's more important. Like, yes, you guys are business partners, but you're also friends. Right. And do you feel what's happening between you is worth right. ruining the friendship over? Right. Mm. Because that is what built the business because That's you guys right. are such good friends and like yeah we have arguments at this time that we want to like kill love each other that. but i love her too much to be like you know make it not work 
Like, if that's more important to me than, like, anything right. else. And I, I would tell people all the time when Sandra was um, still working and, you know, we were deciding, like, what's going to happen for the future blogger house. I was like, there is no blogger house if it's not both of us yeah. together. Like, oh, blogger absolutely. house does not work if mm -hmm. it's just me. I'm not blogger house and neither is she. We are blogger house together mm -hmm. because it's right. this dynamic that... People obviously find and Michaela and the door. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and the and the yeah. community. It oh, all comes yeah. together. But it's true. It is. I mean, it's similar to like how we were like it's both of us on this podcast yeah. or no podcast. Yeah. Like, yeah. and it's important because it really is. I think, especially when it comes to you guys, like part of your charm and your beauty is in the friendship, mm -hmm. and is in like you do life together and Another you experience thing. things mm -hmm. together, and you're incredible friends and and to her children and all of the things and it's really vice versa and it's just so beautiful to see your friendship first and then that's why in, in our opinion for sure because we talk about it all the time like that is absolutely why your business is so successful mm -hmm. is absolutely. because it's rooted in just kindness and friendship and a mutual mm -hmm. love and respect for each other which is really nice to see because I don't it's not always the no. case yeah, honestly absolutely. with social media changing so much <sighs> Please tell us how, I know, <laughs> how much does social media affect your business? I mean, our whole platform is built on social media. Everything that we do is Is that online. something that concerns you? So Everything. it does. Really? <laughs> it does. It does. It does. Every day. Every day. Yes. We are actually considering moving away from um, like the traditional social media platforms because of that. Um, because there's a lot of limitations for mm -hmm. us and our customers want it. They want a more personal, private space. So mm. we are in the looks of that. Um, it'll enable us to do more, do things differently. So, um, there are definitely obviously concerns as we all have as uh, social media, you know, users yeah. and, um, about the changes that are happening. But I think for the most part, you know, we will eventually move into our own individual hosted platform, which is our hope and continue just using social media as a way to connect and influence right. and stuff like that and get, get continue to get the word out, but not as a number one communication well, yeah. source. Yeah, but I think it was really smart that you built the community first mm -hmm. and everyone knows where you are because I think because that once you follow. move it, they're just gonna yeah. follow you. Of course. Yeah. 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 Of course. And, and, and everyone is so mm -hmm. loyal. Like, your it's squad is loyal. Amazing. They are, it's still amazing. Like, it, it doesn't hit us until like people like you say it out loud and I'm like. Or when brands come to yeah. us, like we've had, Brands come to us because they've heard it through their own customers or mm -hmm. like they're they have their own Facebook groups and people have tried to share like our sale in their Facebook group. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, oh lord. Um, yeah, so I'm like, oh you know, boy. So the support is endless. They just I don't know the boundaries. They don't know the boundaries. <laughs> yeah. like, oh. The good thing about it is that we have moved from being like a, com a competition to brands to being part of like an opportunity for them right. because we are introducing our, um, their brands to customers mm -hmm. that maybe have never shopped them. Yes. Um, and at first, when we first came out, we had brands who were like, mm, what are they doing? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. but we're not a competition to them. We right. are just actually an, an extension of their mm -hmm. marketing right. in a way yep. because now I'm getting your clothes into the hands of someone who maybe has never tried. Yeah. And or we, couldn't afford it. Could, okay. And okay. they're going on your it. website afterwards to purchase. shop. Yes. Yes. Apple price mm -hmm. afterwards because they love it yes, so much. Yes, they shop sometimes what you're wearing. Yeah. And oh, they yeah. literally the are time. giving out the links live. Yeah. Oh, here's the link live. And they yeah. post it. So yeah. it's yeah. Like, you, got, you really don't see them as it's the competition. The no, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. That's what we why we're we work because we don't feel any any of these other like any other because our our competition for us. Like right. we're just doing our thing and just trying to be of who we are yeah well i think ultimately you're like competing with yourselves right yeah so you're competing yeah. with the version that you started as two yes. years ago yeah and you're competing with who you are now and who you're planning on becoming mm -hmm. but i wonder like do you ever take a second to like stop and say to yourselves like okay we really did a thing we really did this this is really impressive and like you've checked off a lot of boxes like you're not just women owned but you're women owned you're latina owned you are entrepreneurs, you are, I mean, there's so much to Build both the community. of you that do you ever just take a second to like, probably now you're like, oh wow, yeah, we did do yeah. this. <laughs> no, no, I'm gonna say absolutely not. We don't we have don't. time to stop to do we those don't. things. Like we, we, we absolutely have no time to yeah. stop to do like even think about things. We're just going, 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 going. And yeah. then like to have done all of that and at the same time, like 
create further conversation for bigger brands, right? Because you are re- mm-hmm. you are introducing brands to people who don't have access sometimes. Mm-hmm. And then on top of it, like there's a whole sustainability portion to this yes. right. that is just incredible. Which is super important to us as well. The mm-hmm. fact that we are able to save people, save clothing, save people from, you know, maybe just even just tossing clothes. I've heard people, mm-hmm. oh yeah, just threw it away. I'm like, wait, what? Like, oh, there's so many people that could use as clothes. And uh, I grew up um, shopping in thrift shops my whole life. Mm-hmm. My mom used to call um, our local thrift shop, shop the second house. And I was like, but she would say it in Spanish. I was like, este con jaume. And I was instead like, of second hand. instead of the second <laughs> hand, oh. because obviously she did, did you know, English, Spanish, whatever. Right. She used to say, a second hand. And I'm like, oh, I thought second hand was the name of the place. Like for a really long time. I was like, oh, my mom's going to the second hand store. Okay. All right. <laughs> <gasps> she's gonna kill me for oh my god <laughs> <laughs> you're dead she's, you're mom. So dead. <laughs> she's dead and you know and that's where a lot of my clothes came from so i grew up shopping thrift I, um it's 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 ingrained in me so i the idea of throwing out clothes Mm-mm. because it has a stain or it has a mark or you use it and now you're bored or it doesn't fit you was like wild to me that people were doing this um, and so much so that we're hoping to expand and be able to do more with the donators. The Blumhouse donates oh my God, um, so much. over, I would say, probably every month, over 100 pieces of clothing wow. to local That's organizations. Um, every month, there are clothes that, you know, may have like a little mark or may have a little rip. We can't mm-hmm. sell them, um, but we are able to sell them. We did a huge um, charity sale this summer where we donated funds to a local organization. That was like another thing. So we're always looking for ways of how do we work with our community, not only our blogger house community, but our communities in need because this all started from a necessity. Right. Mm-hmm. So. right. That's and amazing. yes, we never stop to actually think about no. it. Only when people actually say it, we're like, oh, shoot, we're doing those things. That's amazing. But yeah. well, before we finish, I do want, from a personal standpoint, I do want to thank you so much for being out there and not giving up because I know how hard it is in the very beginning of a business. It's really, really tough. And then you guys had to face COVID and so many changes and leaving your job, you know, leaving your job is a really big deal Mm -hmm. in this space, you know, and having to do this, you know, and not having the security of that paycheck all the time. Mm -hmm. But I think that being that inspiration for so many people, especially Latinas and Latino people, you know, for them to take that step is a really, really big deal. So thank you so much. We want to thank you. If it was honestly like, we don't call you the godmother of the house for nothing. <laughs> we would definitely not be here if it wasn't for you. I just don't want to sell my own clothes. No. <laughs> I, I just want to thank you for taking all the bags out of me. <laughs> we will take all the bags so out of me. So much house. stuff. But <laughs> yes, you I think it's important that if if nothing else, let this episode be your marker that you come back to that reminds you of how much you've done and how much you're helping other people. Cause I think it is a really big deal to you know, be all the things that you are. Yeah. And, and look good while doing it. Because Thank you guys you. really did follow your journey. And that's a big thing for me. Like, follow mm. your journey. And you really, in telling your story, I'm literally, like, listening to you. And I could just follow the entire, you know, thing. It was meant to be, like you said. This mm-hmm. was meant to be exactly, exactly how it is. And you know what? It's having beautiful people, like, both of you, yeah. partner, encouraging and telling you you can do these things. Like, if you don't surround yourself with the right people... Exactly you're going to struggle at so many things. Get the right people on your back. Well, Get that the right That's yeah. what it is. <laughs> so at the end of every episode, we do two things. We ask each other and our guests, what are you grateful for and what's in style right now? And it could be anything. It doesn't need to be literal. It doesn't need to be... Like actual could be stuff. Yeah. anything that, that hits a chord for you. Know, I was you, practicing but... this earlier and then I totally forgot what I was practicing. <laughs> so... Good job. Think back to the mom when you're looking at the mirror. Like, I don't know. I, I feel being kind. I think now with everything going on, like kindness has kind of like went out the window. I feel a little mm. bit of kindness goes so far. Agreed. And I feel like more people need to be just a little bit kinder to each yes. other. And it would just make this world a lot better piece. Yes. Absolutely. So that's I, like what that. I feel like should be in style more. Yes. I like it. Be a little kinder. And what are you grateful for today? I'm grateful for everyone at this table. I know it's going to be like cliche, but you took it. Totally, <laughs> totally honest. Like, again, Maddie, we wouldn't be here because of you. And again, having just great people on your team, on your side to encourage you and just be there is one of the things everyone should be grateful for, for sure. Agreed. Agreed. Ding, ding, ding. You see my wheels turning. You're right. <laughs> It's time. <laughs> All right. So I think what's in style is 
connecting with people. And mm. if that's not one of the biggest things that this year has taught us mm -hmm. is that you don't need to physically see somebody to be connected to them. Yes. Um, and there are so many people, our friends, our family, who are going through it. We don't know sometimes. Mm -hmm. We might send them a text message or we might like their photo, um, but we're not going to Eshamal to see if they're actually okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. think, you know, what's in style is really reach out and connect with people. Yes. Connect with people you love, connect with friends. And what am I grateful for? Um, dang it, she just took one. Um, okay. <laughs> Being able to be in person with people, like Ooh, touch, hug, wow. yes. like hold, like that. I mean, we do everything virtually, right? So for a year, um, we were on doing all these different things. We did like happy time. <laughs> yes. yeah. We saw no, well, you, uh, yours were like great over yeah. on like, uh, it was a clubhouse or whatever. It was before that we used to use house party. House party. House party. Yeah. But I miss like touching people, hugging yes, people, yes. leaning in on people. It made me realize I'm not the uber like um, huggy feely kind of person, but it made me realize like how much I still miss, miss that, that, even mm -hmm. though I'm not. So uh, if I randomly like grab you by the leg, you just <laughs> just act <laughs> like it's okay. Like yeah. just you know, it is what it is. Right. I love that. Right. I Maddie, love what that. about you? You're up. So I think what's in style right now, I feel like people are more vulnerable these days mm -hmm. instead of being so rigid. Again, yeah. like people are being, you know, need to be a little bit more kind. Mm -hmm. But I think that sometimes the things that have happened in your past maybe stop you from being mm -hmm. so vulnerable and open to having those friendships that really do need to be in your life. Sometimes you just so, you know, you mm -hmm. have that tight circle and I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm not coming out of that circle. But you know what? Maybe taking a bit of a chance mm -hmm. on those friendships, yeah. like what happened here, and look at how the friendship has blossomed and yeah. touched so many people. So that definitely it should be and is in style. Yes. And what I'm grateful for is to have That was a good one. Time. That was a Thank good you. one. Okay, well, I'm literally that was like good. just I'm feeling I'm feeling the vibe. I'm feeling yeah. the love. Yeah. I really am feeling the love. <laughs> what we do. Yeah. These are my girls. So it's like this is family. Yeah. So I'm like so grateful. I am really grateful for the friendships in my life. I don't have a lot of close friendships because I have my sisters, which I adore mm -hmm. more than life. But the friendships that I have are so important to me. Be and like you said, you may not see them all the time, mm -hmm. but you know that they're there. And I know that I can pick up the phone or I can chit chat or I could send you a funny joke or something mm -hmm. and we'll laugh about it. You know, your voice messages. <laughs> like I, I appreciate the friendships in my life because they're not many, but the, they mean so mm -hmm. much. So I am very grateful for that. Yeah. Love that. God, pressure's <laughs> on. Pressure on. Jeez. Jeez. <laughs> I guess I can't say coffee anymore. No, I, um, I can say coffee. Like. I am, what's in style for me right now is dressing up again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? Like, okay, so we're all in Lane Bryant. The yeah. episode was sponsored by Lane Bryant. We're so grateful to them, but how good does it feel? Yeah. Right? Oh, we all look at each other like. Right? Like, I'm like, yes. Like we're all like, like everyone's just like crisp and sharp and dressed and like fall yeah. fat. Like everyone just looks so good. It's such a good feeling. And mm -hmm. I think it's time to like push yourself a little bit. Let's get dressed. Okay. Let's dress let's up. Let's put a bow in our bun. Yeah. yeah. yeah I'm going to do that. Like, I, did it. Oh, you. I love that. So I love cute. it. Like I just think it's really, it's important and it's a big time mood booster. Mm -hmm. So I think what's in style is getting dressed and getting fancy. Oh, yes. yes. Um, and I am incredibly grateful for loyalty and support. Uh, mm, yes. um, especially from everyone at this table, obviously, but it's, it's not lost on me how supportive we have been of each other. And I think it, it behind the scenes, right? Mm -hmm. Like we don't shout it like, oh, we get, we're, oh, do this. But like, we just do it without being asked yeah. or told. Right. And we equally respect each other so much to just, share and support and show love and be there for each other no matter what and it's really really nice and very special and i think it's important and deserved a shout yes. out yeah so that's what i'm grateful for yes and i have to say thank you so much you guys for coming and thank, thank you. you so much so Lane. grateful brian yes, yes thank you so oh much my God. and for sponsor sponsoring this episode this okay. specific episode really meant a lot to me because it was very close to my heart and love you guys so much oh, yeah. that's it yes. till next time yes. see you on the next episode Bye. Bye. Oh, my God.